hi friends this is uh, the revision of the anatomy of the cerebellum okay so uh, as you know the cerebellum is present in the posterior cranial fossa this is the posterior cranial fossa where the cerebellum is present and it is present behind the pons and the middle of oblongata separated by a uh, space cavity called as the fourth ventricle okay and this is of the weight of almost uh, one tenth of the the cerebrum okay if you may uh, Uh, imagine that uh, the cerebellum cerebrum is almost 1.5 kilos then this will be just uh, 150 grams that is 1/10th of the uh, the cerebrum but the uh, the surface area is much more larger it is almost half of that of the cerebrum this is because of the the huge number of depressions and elevation the depressions which are called as the fissures numerous fissures are present here which give the surface much more uh, bigger area even though it is just one tenth of the uh, cerebrum but it is almost half the size of the uh, cerebrum uh in case of the surface area of the uh, the uh, this uh, cerebellum okay and the surface area uh, is uh, made up of the gray matter and this is called as the cerebellar cortex just like the cerebral cortex this is called as the cerebellar co cortex and deep inside will be the the white matter okay uh it has two hemispheres the right and the left hemispheres uh, separated by a vermis worm like structure called as worm is uh, there are two surfaces superior surface as well as the inferior surface surface uh, and the worm is is much more prominent seen from below uh, in a space called as the valvula and they are separated from the uh, hemisphere this worm is is separated from the worm is uh, from the hemispheres uh, by uh, the sulcus called as the paramedian sulcus which can be seen prominent from from below Oh, even though i am showing here on the uh, superior surface so this is the superior surface and uh, uh, there are two notches in the front and the back the front notch this is called as the uh, anterior cerebellar notch and the posteriorly we have the posterior cerebellar notch which separates the two hemispheres and the posterior uh, cerebellar hemisphere uh, posterior cerebellar notch is uh, the place where the fox cerebellar is present okay and here you can see the folia which are the uh, the elevated areas uh, and the depressions are called as the sulci okay and if you take a section uh, of the and see from the lateral side you can see a tree like structure here so this is called as the arb arbor vitae so means the tree of life okay and there are two fissures the primary fissure which can be seen on the superior surface this is called as the primary fissure and which separate the anterior lobe from the posterior lobe okay and there is one more fissure called as the the posterior lateral fissure so if you imagine this is the uh, the uh, side view and this is the superior surface and this is the inferior surface so the uh, in the superior surface we can see the primary fissure which separate the anterior lobe from the the bigger larger posterior lobe and the posterior lobe is separated uh, by uh, from the floccular nodular lobe that, that is the third lobe by a fissure called as the posterior lateral fissure this is the posterior lateral fissure and this is the primary fissure which separate the anterior lobe from the posterior lobe and then the, we have the third lobe this is called as the floccular nodular lobe there is also a horizontal fissure which separates which is much imaginary fissure uh, called as the uh, horizontal fissure which separate the superior surface from the inferior surface and here in the center we can see the vermis okay so vermis is divided into nine parts okay the lingula central lobule culmen decli folium tuber pyramis uvula and nodule okay all these are related to a part of the uh, cerebellar hemisphere except the lingula lingula means tongue like okay so this is uh, not related to any part in the cerebellar hemisphere so the other part the, the central lobule is related to the a lobe of the anterior lobe then culmen is uh, related to the anterior quadrangular lobule these two are forming the anterior lobe others are the the posterior lobe the declive is related to the posterior quadrangular lobule the folium is related to the superior semilunar lobule the tuber is uh, important because it is related not to one but to two two parts of the cerebellar hemisphere that is the inferior semilunar lobule as well as the gracile lobe these are this is the only part which is related to two parts in the cerebellar hemisphere then pyramis is related to the biventral lobule then uvula is related to the tonsil tonsil is called as tonsil because it is uh, looks like that of the a tonsil in the oral cavity and uvula is the hanging part okay then we have the nodule which is related to the flocculus together this is called as the flocculonodular lobe okay so there are three lobes and two fissures 
and there are nine parts in the vermis which are related to the uh, a part in the uh, the uh, uh, cerebellar hemisphere itself except when the lingula but the tuber has two parts so there are nine parts here also okay coming to the uh, white matter uh, of the cerebe cerebellum the uh, the cerebellum is held in its position uh, uh, by uh, white fibers which are in the form of bundles the fibers which are coming or going from the uh, midbrain that will be called as the superior cerebellar peduncle which are coming from the pons or going to the pons which will be called as the middle cerebellar peduncle and then we have the inferior cerebellar peduncle coming or going to the uh, middle oblongata and there are five types of fibers within them the efferent fibers which are entering from different parts of the cns into the cerebellum okay the projection fibers are those fibers which are from the cerebellar cortex to the cerebellar nuclei in deep inside the white matter the collection of cell body neurons which are called as nuclei there are four nuclei within them we'll talk about them so they are present deep inside so the connection between the cerebellar cortex to the cerebellar nuclei is by the projection fibers then there are association fibers which are connecting different parts of the cerebellar cortex one sort of, uh, functional area with the other area then we have the commissural fibers which are connecting the two cerebellar hemisphere there are two cerebellar hemispheres which are connected by the commissural fiber then we have the different fibers which are going away from from the cerebellar uh, cerebellum okay then there are four uh, nuclei okay as i said nuclei is nothing but the collection of the cell body neurons within the white matter this is the gray matter and here is the white matter within them there are uh, nuclei the largest one is called as the dentate nuclei then we have the emboliform then the globulus then we have the fastigial nucleus these are the four nuclei which are present uh, uh, in the cerebellum then uh, the cerebellum is also divided developmentally into three parts the archaea cerebellum is the uh, oldest uh, part <coughs> So this archaea cerebellum is the oldest part developed and uh, most earliest. So it is shown in black color, the lingula as well as the floccular nodular lobe, which is present even in case of the the primitive animals. And this is our mainly important in the maintenance of the body and equilibrium. Okay, and the connections are coming mainly from the vestibular. Okay, then we have the paleo cerebellum shown in the dotted lines, uh, dotted uh, dots. Okay, so the mainly the anterior lobe and part of the vermis that is the central lobule columnar as well as the pyramis and ulna. These are the four parts of the vermis and the anterior lobe are made up of the uh, are coming from the paleo cerebellum and the connections will be mainly from or to the spinal cord and they are mainly uh, uh, important in the maintenance of the the tone of the muscles as well as the the finer control. Not the fine control, the finer control of the movements like walking and other things. Then the neo cerebellum is the uh, most evolved form and well, uh, well developed, and this is shown in the unshaded uh, colors. That is the the posterior lobe, main most of the part of the posterior except the pyramis and the ulna, and the connections are mainly coming from the higher centers. from the cerebral cortex okay and they are mainly help in the fine coordinated movements of the body like drawing painting and other things the main uh, connections of the cerebellum are the efferent and different fibers uh, the spinal cerebellar fibers are the efferent fibers coming from the spinal cord going to the cerebellum okay then we have the ponto cerebellar coming from the pons going to the cerebellum then the olio cerebellum coming from the olive going to the cerebellum then we have the vestibular cerebellar coming from the vestibular nucleus going to the cerebellum then reticulo cerebellar coming from reticular formation going to the uh, cerebellum okay then the efferents are starting from the cerebellum so they start from the cerebellum rubral rubral is a red nucleus so the fibers which are coming from the cerebellum to the red nucleus they are cerebro uh, rubral then we have the fibers going to the thalamus from the cerebellum these are called as the cerebellum thalamic and from there to the cerebral cortex then we have the cerebellar cerebellum vestibular going to the vestibular nucleus these are called as the cerebellum vestibular then going to the reticular formation from the cerebellum these are called as the cerebellum reticular okay then coming to the uh, uh, the uh, the blood supply the superior surface will be supplied by the one artery called as the superior cerebellar branch of the basilar artery basilar artery is formed by the two vertebral arteries so it gives one branch superior cerebellar artery which supply the whole of the superior surface inferior surface is supplied by two arteries anti inferior cerebellar artery which is coming directly from the basilar artery then we have the posterior inferior cerebellar artery that is coming from the vertebral artery that is the difference 
Okay, coming to the venous drainage, the superior surface will be draining into the straight transverse as well as superior petrosal sinus, inferior surface will be draining into the right and left sigmoid sinus, uh, inferior petrosal sinus, occipital sinus as well as the straight sinus. Uh, finally, coming to the functions of the uh, cerebellum, there are four. The fine coordinated movements are the most important. Then we have maintenance of the equilibrium is the second. Learning of new movements will be the third and the complex eye movement are the four. Okay, these are the four important functions of the cerebellum. So, this is all about uh, the cerebellum in brief for the revision. Uh, if you want to uh, attend the main lecture, then go to my main lecture. There you can understand it much more better in detail. This is just for the revision. Thank you very much.